Welcome back to the channel. Now this video is going to be about using the guard terminal on the MTR105 rotator machine tester from Mega whilst carrying out insulation testing. Now, now I've actually got a little bit out of sync with these videos. I did want to have this video out much earlier but uh, I got a bit delayed trying to build up this uh, bushing here to simulate uh, a bushing test using a guard terminal. Only the MTR105 has a guard terminal on it. Neither the metric coil nor the Keysight U1461A have guard terminals, so they are going to sit out this uh, video and we'll just be concentrating on the MTR105 here. There are actually three methods that I know for using a guard terminal during an insulation test. If I just spin the uh, test around, you see I have a lead here already in the positive terminal of the insulation tester. The first way of using the guard terminal in an insulation test is to use it with a shielded test lead. Now Mega don't actually provide you with a shielded test lead as part of the accessories for this. So this one I have here is from a different insulation tester. And you can see I have the jack here, it's the black lead. And you will have a screen all the way up this lead here that is terminated just at one end. So I would put in a standard two wire insulation test and then the shield will get plugged into the guard terminal there. So once we've set up the insulation tester with the terminals, you would carry out the insulation test in exactly the same way. So for this, I have my winding simulator set up in an open winding configuration here. So it'd be one lead onto one winding, one lead onto the earth, and then I would actually link together the two phases not in test, and then take them down to earth. And that would be my test configuration with a guard terminal. And what the shielded lead will actually do will take away any leakage that goes in between the two leads. Now, to be honest, at 500 volts, it's unlikely you're going to get much leakage between the positive and the negative of the insulation tester unless you trap the leads together or something like that, or they're damaged or they're excessively dirty. You do start to see leakage coming in at around about 1,000 volts, um, but with a good set of test leads, it's not much of an issue really. Uh, but that is your first method that you can use for this kind of a test. So for the second way, of using a guard terminal on an insulation tester is to actually make it a three wire test. You can see at the top here I've plugged three separate leads into the positive, negative and guard terminal. Again I have my motor winding simulator in open winding configuration so to connect up to test I would connect him here and this will be for a standard test. So I will do this, uh, let's do a DAR test at 500 volts. And we'll set that off. So this would be a standard test without using the guard terminal. And I'm just wired to one winding. The two windings are shorted and then taken to earth. Now a motor will actually have, as well as leakage from each phase to earth, you will actually have in open winding configuration leakage from one phase to each of the other two phases. And on my winding simulator, that's actually created here by these set of links here, so I can remove that if I want to. Uh, on this occasion, I've got it in circuit. And this test that I'm doing now will measure the overall insulation resistance of this phase to earth and this phase to the other two phases via earth. Okay, uh, there's my final reading, a DAR of 1.61, 6.92 mega ohms at 30 seconds and 11.5 mega ohms at 60 seconds. Uh, so what I'll actually have to do now is short this for a period of time so that I remove any residual charge in the circuit. Okay, with the circuit discharged, 
I'll now reconfigure this to use a guard terminal test, which will involve using this third lead here. So what the guard terminal will enable me to do is to remove the leakage from this phase into the other two phases. And I'll do that by removing you. I'm going to leave the two phases linked together. And I'm going to plug the guard terminal onto two phases. So now I will get a true resistance reading of this one phase to earth and I'm actually expecting it to be higher than the previous reading. So we'll go down to uh, DAR again, 500 volts, exactly the same test, just using the guard terminal, go button, and we'll leave him running for one minute. I'll speed this one up so we're not sat here for the full one minute. Okay, so that's the test completed, and you can actually see now my dial ratio has gone up, and my final reading, which was 11 mega ohms before, is now 20 mega ohms, so nearly double what the previous reading was. And that will be the true insulation value of this first phase going down to Earth. Now, what I can also do is change this configuration around to give me some more diagnostics. So instead of taking these two phases, into the guard terminal. What I could actually do is put this onto one phase and I can do a phase to phase measurement and I can then take this one down to earth and I can put the guard terminal onto the chassis and that way I'm measuring the true insulation value between these two phases and everything else, any other leakage from phases to earth or between uh, either of these two phases to the third phase will be discarded. Um, so you can use this for more diagnostics during a, an insulation test. To be honest, it's fairly rare to do this kind of testing at low voltage using the guard terminal. Okay, so that's that one. Um, the final way of using a guard terminal on an insulation tester is when you're testing around bushings. So the next demonstration of using the guard terminal will be testing this bushing. And the, the actual, what I'll do is just drop this connection off here. So this is a set up as a standard bushing feeding into a, a piece of electrical apparatus. The circuit will be going through on this connection here and there will be a leakage from the circuit into earth that we will be able to pick up with this test. And unfortunately, as you will see, I'm going to struggle. Uh, this is M16 and the grippers don't work. So I'll have to use a crop clip, which isn't supplied with the MTR105. And then I can clip him on. Um, and instead of doing it down, I'm just going to do a time test on this one because it's just straight normal resistance testing now. Uh, hit the go button and this is a 30 second test uh, but it should stabilize very very quickly. And you can see we're about 995-996 mega ohms so that would be the reading of the circuit into earth. Okay so that's my final reading. Now with the bushing being in service over time you will get dust and dirt sit on the surfaces of the bushing and you will slowly develop leakage across the surface of this bushing down into earth and that's what this little lead simulates here so I'll put it back into the circuit and we'll go for another 30 second insulation test there and we'll just repeat the same test again and this time we should get a lower reading so 995 to 830 mega ohms I've dropped 160 mega ohms due to the leakage over the surface of this bushing
uh, and as the circuit ages and the dirt builds up it will obviously increase and you'll get a lower and lower in resistance. So there's my final reading. Now what the guard terminal allows me to do is to capture the leakage over the surface of this bushing and remove it from the insulation test reading. To do this we have these little conductive collars um, and we wrap them around the bushing. Feed them through there. And then we clamp guard terminal here onto this conductive collar. So I'll leave him there. And we repeat the test again. And hopefully this time we should be back up to our original resistance reading of 995.996 mega ohms. So this has now captured all the leakage over the surface of the bushing and is removing it from the reading. There we go, there's a final reading. So using this methodology you can remove any dirt from the circuit of that bushing and it's also an indicator as to how clean the bushing is. To actually confirm that what I can actually do is change this configuration and swap over my connections. So I now put the insulation test across the bushing and put guard terminal onto the chassis. So now I should just be measuring insulation resistance and there. And that should be a 5 giga ohm resistor that I've put in there. And you can see we're at 4.95 giga ohms. So that's an indicator of the leakage across the surface of the bushing and can tell you the condition of the bushing whether you need to clean it or not. Okay, so that's that one there, 4.95 and what I can actually do, I'll have to swap over the crop clip because he won't go on. If I put the guard terminal onto the circuit and do the insulation test to the chassis from this point here. So there, you can see I'm at 68 mega ohms. So I've got much lower resistance over the bottom half of this bushing than I have over the top half. So that to me indicates that there's more dirt over this bottom half and I should concentrate on the cleaning actions over this bottom half or between wherever I've placed the collar uh, and doing the negative terminal of the insulation test. Yeah, so that one finished. Okay, so that's it for this video. Fairly short, just uh, some test methods that you can use when you're using a guard terminal on an insulation tester. It's fairly unusual to have guard terminal on a, a low voltage or 1000 volt insulation tester. You don't usually use those techniques at this kind of voltage level. If you get up into testing at 2.5, 5, 10 kV, then you can make good use of the guard terminal. But it's a facility that Mega have put on there and it can be used to give you extra diagnostics on certain pieces of apparatus uh, should the need arise. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like. And I'll see you again in the next video.